I freeze up and I just look at her very intently oh my god I I saw that I dreamt about that I look skeptically at Amber that sounds awfully convenient darling you're probably having deja vu thinking that I've referenced something that looks similar to something you think you had a dream about but it's a common thing it's not and I look very troubled, but I don't say anything else about it. Well, I look at Simon. I guess there's only a few questions, isn't there? What happened to them? Did they get taken away? I guess. I guess that means on the map, these aren't ports. They are probably the villages. Well, it is a research station, so we were right about that. When I dreamt the other night about this boar-headed huge person yeah. and my friend, Jennifer, do I remember what it was she said to me? It's a little bit fussy. You were, like, sleeping, but wasn't it something about you're all going to be Flayed? To Bobby Knippet's honor or something? That weird name she said. That didn't make sense when you... When you dreamt, but... Now it... Makes maybe more sense. Oh, nothing, just... Well, it's just... It's just what she said in the dream. Nothing really makes any sense here, and I'm trying desperately to make sense of stuff, so I I ask myself, what what is my gut feel about what all of this is, about what we're investigating? You have seen the arrows buried in the cottage walls outside. You have found the left rifle. You're pretty sure people were here and they were attacked. The story from the diary seems to be correct in that sense. You also have this weird feeling like almost as there was or is a presence of something else in here. Something left. Can't really explain it. It's almost as you three aren't alone in here. I start looking around worryingly in the cottage. Is there any windows or like holes where people can look through? There are like only windows with that you can shut, but there, there are no glass or anything. You can just open them to let in some air and light. Small windows. Wendy. Amber. I'm not sure we're alone anymore. I don't know. It's just... It feels like there's something here. What, in here? In the cottage? I don't know. Or outside, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure we're not alone anymore. I look over at that bed that was made yeah um is there signs of like recent usage of stuff no well if there were any uh, people from the expedition left here surely they'd made themselves known to us I mean 
I mean, we don't look like... I mean, we look like normal people. So maybe it's something else. Honey, let's not forget if they're still here. If even one person was still here, they'd be about 80, 90 years old. Living here that long, I don't think... Likely. They probably got used to hiding then. So they wouldn't want our company, is that what you mean? I sort of just get up from the bed, put the book down, and I'll just go and peek out a window very carefully. Yeah. Windy. Outside it's... No people or animals, but you can see it's just jungle. But now when you read the diary and, and can guess what happened here, it feels, feels more like less like a home and more like a graveyard or something. The horrible fates of these people, the feeling of despair, is kind of in the walls. Almost like as if you had a feeling that this terrible fate would afflict you in some way, that it would. Uh, curse you or something it's just rational thoughts but I just stare out at the jungle and I have this feeling and I I feel angry again I feel what right do you have to curse us what right do you have to curse me I don't deserve to be cursed who do you people think you are I'm thinking these all in my mind, and I kind of just sort of tap the uh, side of the window a little, and then I just sort of look round, and I'm just like, number one, thinking, is there anything we've missed? And number two, I say, all right, well, let's focus on getting this radio working. The way I see it, I don't care. I don't care about any wonderful Indiana Jones mystery. I, we need to find a way of getting out of the situation, don't we, dears? How could we do that? Is there, I go back to the book, is there any mention of the boat? It said boat. They came by boat. How did they come by boat? Where did they come by boat? Anything, you know, they can't have come through that reef which seems to tear up boats. It must have come from somewhere else. It might even still be here because if they came by boat, they wouldn't have just left the boat. What's that? Did I just hear that? I think so. I pause as they say, did they just hear something? And I prick my ears up. I did think I just heard some sort of... What was it I thought I heard? Was that someone crying? I thought I heard someone crying. But then again, that's what we heard. Well, that girl was taken away as well. Hmm. I kind of just at this point open the door and just poke my head outside. You look outside, but it's still just empty. The grass here. It's just grass and then the jungle surrounding everything. And then suddenly you hear something. This drooning mechanical sound that sounds totally artificial compared to the sound of the jungle and it it sounds like it erupts up from the mountains of the island the sound of a siren that can't be what the fuck then I go to the door and I look out I look up towards the mountains yes and I follow Amber for a bit the sound of this siren it's like a droning Siren 
I think of those films I used to watch as a kid in the six in the sixties, where there'd be some sort of evacuation or like an air raid, as the kind of siren I hear. And I say to Amber, I I can hear it too, darling. It's like in a war film. Should we hide or should we try to find the source? Is this good or is it bad? I, I, I don't know anything anymore. But if you can fix that radio, maybe that's the first thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll. Uh, it's just I can't, I can't think in this. Yeah, no, sound. you can think, Simon. Come on, darling. We had a nice morning. Okay, let's yeah. think now. Let's use our mind. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. go back and. You can do yeah. it, Simon. Come on. Uh, I try to focus on the radio and see if I can either repair it or make something that can send out some kind of signal with the par- parts uh, from the radio. I sort of sit watching. I'm looking very irritable. I'm sort of nursing my head as this siren just drones on and on and on. I think, why doesn't it fucking shut up? It continues for a while. While Simon is investigating the radio, open it up and, and check if everything is right. Actually, Simon, you can roll for your ability to, to repair things as an inventor with reason to see if you can uh, manage to repair this. Nine. So, no. Well, you can still do that, but uh, it won't be perfect. You believe it could be started, but before you could do anything with this radio, you need to to also mend the masts up in the trees. It's kind of dangerous because you would have to have to climb up the trees and try to mend it. The good news is that you found some old uh, tools in the research station. They have obviously built the station, so they have uh, both uh, saws and uh, different uh, things to use to to build things and and repair things. But uh, you can't really try and see if the radio works before the mast is is repaired because it has no reach at all and you're in the middle of the jungle. So that would probably take some hours, maybe the rest of the day for you. I wipe some sweat off my forehead as the heat is probably building up here during, well, the, the day. Well, it's it's not as hot as on the beach because you have the shadows from the surrounding jungle, so it's better here than there. But uh... this is gonna take a while. Maybe keep an eye out for anything. I mean that that siren must have meant something. I just don't want to be caught in the middle of something. Well, you know if more people were stranded on the island the, the things that live here will be kept busy for a while well I suppose we need to fix this radio don't we so I guess that's our day I don't see the point in going anywhere else I mean if these aren't ports I don't think we really want to visit the natives although I'm a logical woman I think it's possible that our <laughs> One non-enemy maybe comes from this nearby village. If you think that maybe the other one, pointing at the one furthest away, was the one we saw those other people from. It said that these tribes aren't actually friends. (laughs) Maybe that's something we can use to our advantage. (laughs) But wasn't that like 80 years ago? Maybe some of them are less violent than the others just one tribe left or 
two tribes. I mean, this guy, obviously, I mean, he wasn't, it wasn't like an old man kind of thing. So there's probably a few more left and I wouldn't be surprised if there's more tribes than his or the other ones. I advise also that any of this food or stuff we find here, we use this first. We leave the rations for now if we can. Yeah, because they're easy to take along. But yeah, okay, I'll keep an eye out. I, I, I go pick up the hunting rifle where you put it and I just look through the scope. Maybe you could uh, scout around the close perimeter to see if there's any source of water. Yeah. There's probably a reason to why they put the camp here. Yeah. The research station here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, darling. Yes, I'll go and join you, Amber. Have a bit of a walk. Well, maybe just a little walk. Uh, don't go too far, please. We won't. Simon. Those weapons that have been laying for years, maybe over 60 years, that would be really dangerous to fire them without a careful going through, picking them apart, cleaning them, checking everything. They could as well explode in the hands of the shooter if you fired a bullet in the now. Yeah. Even um... the gun. Maybe you should leave the weapon, the, the, the gun and the rifle, because we don't know if it's working properly yet. We should probably test that out or check it over before we try to fire it. Bring the machete and the, and the knife, oh, maybe? Wait, what do you, you, you mean? These aren't... I sort of just take the gun I had out. Wait, what? Do you, there's a problem with them? Uh, I don't I I'm not a gun nut and I'm not a chemical engineer thingy I I just don't know what happens to gunpowder after 60 70 years I wrinkle my nose a little and then actually place the gun back on the bunk like oh I see it's covered with rust and such and I don't believe it's a good idea to fire a weapon if it's obstructed in any way well I guess it wouldn't be a good idea to try them either if we fired a shot well people would hear not without uh, cleaning them out at least but no and yeah that would actually draw people here maybe All right. well I guess then I look at her amber and hand her the machete you're a young girl I'm sure you've got a better swing than me well, maybe it'll at least help us clear a path. Hmm. <sighs> well, shall we go then? Just a little walk, maybe just a perimeter walk, darling. We don't really need to go anywhere else. And, and watch where you're going. It seems like there's caves nearby. I rub my wrist. I, um... Uh, so I've now changed into a pair of trousers and some kind of shirt... And yeah, like military green, I guess. Yes, I also take a moment just to pop off somewhere and get myself in some slightly more appropriate clothing because now, obviously, my suit's been torn up and muddied. I even have a bit of a clean using some, well, a splash of water very quick. Mostly my own sweat to look a little presentable again, if slightly more outdoorsy. I'd probably use the trainers still, though, because I think they're more comfortable than the boots. Yeah. I guess both of you look like researchers and explorers from the 50s. With those clothes on you, and if you take the hats to use against the sun and everything, also. Amber is actually a little bit alike that woman, and. Of course, I was younger, but... Hmm. I probably wouldn't take the hat. I mean, it's just gonna... It's, I, I'd look... I don't, I don't... I'm not happy with dressing up like this, Oh, really. Amber, come on, honey. Don't be silly. Just put it on. It's for your own good. And I've already put my hat on, and I sort of try and put the hat on her head. Yeah. And I let her put it on. 
and it's like, ugh. There we go. Good girl now. Come on. It suits you. <laughs> I just go out, find a place to pee, and then start looking for a well. Yeah, actually, you had that trail uh, leading uh, to the hole uh, that uh, then they fall in last night. Probably in daylight, it wouldn't be so dangerous to go there. And it seems that they have made this trail to go there. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that's fresh water. I don't know. I think it might be. It definitely felt fresh when I was in it. I sort of leaned down to look a little. And I'm a little away from the uh, cottage. I sort of just say, So, you and Simon seem to get along well. <laughs> I don't know. He's kind of cute, but it's not like we're here on uh, some soap opera. Hmm. I smile gently at this. Of course, he's a nice boy, but uh, just be careful, yes? I mean, he's a little impulsive. Bless him. He's, I think he's got a good soul, but he just doesn't... I don't think he uses his brain sometimes, you know? And he seems to panic easy. Oh my god, what do you think? I'm not going to get married to him. Darling, I... I didn't mean that. I meant more in a sort of immediate situation. I just worry about you. I just don't want... And I I think we need to be careful sometimes. If we don't guide him down the right path, I think he might go and get himself hurt. Or worse. He just keeps wanting to run into things. And yeah. He's kind of a loose cannon. So, uh... Did you know anyone? I mean, on the... The plane. I look at you for a short moment. Blink. No. No. Well, I do pause and then I was with a work colleague, actually. Very silly, stupid man. Of course, he didn't deserve to die. I don't even know what happened to him. But you didn't care for him. He laughed way too loud, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, you got like what a family and stuff back home yes I told you I have two lovely daughters a lot like you actually although you're a little better <laughs> I bet uh, my mom would say the same about yours oh maybe no they're lovely they just uh, don't really appreciate what they've got you know and they've got quite a lot get it from their father he spoils them he always did mm. are you still together? of course of course we are we're a good solid couple I sort of um, as I'm saying this I'm sort of looking at that ravine looking back at Amber yeah you're sitting like on this little beach by the water there's a high cliff on one side, the cliff you fell down from the other day. And then on the other side of of the water, there are other cliff where you saw the girl yesterday. Then you can see this, this water is continuing forward and into a trickling trail of water that probably are going down in the sea or something. But it seems to come directly from the earth here, like from underground or something. Pretty fresh water. You can use it to, like, wash your faces. And... Yes. I, it, does it look like there's a much safer way of actually getting closer to it or getting down there rather than falling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the trail mm. leads down to it and it's not steep I at all. I kind of took a bottle with me and I will go and see if, like, experimentation time, see if we can get some water. And as I'm doing this, I sort of look back at Amber and go... Yeah, Snow Maya. The problem with my two is they just don't push themselves forward. I try to give them every opportunity I can, but they just, they're a bit wasteful. You're not wasteful, are you? I, you everything I've seen has made you seem like quite a 
strong young woman. I, you, you, what do you do? do? You were studying something? You trying to get a good job, go to university? <sighs> well, I try to wash my face, but it's probably a bit of sticky mascara and eyeshadow left what hasn't run off yet. Probably look a bit messy, but I, uh, I'm, I'm going to start college this year, but I don't wanna, you know, I've, I get what you mean, that, you know, you should, you should be grateful for the opportunities you get, but, you know, I got this, I got this blog, and I got a pretty good, you know, solid following, people can get, you know, money from this these days, you get send stuff, and you showcase things, you know? I kind of raise an eyebrow, I smile, I go, a blog, honey, oh, honey, a blog isn't going to get you anywhere you need to... no no I'm not I know what you're gonna say you're gonna say I'm gonna say go and get a good job and and, and and support yourself no no you need to do more you need to do more you need to really go and take opportunities when they come darling not a blog you need to put yourself out there you never know one day you'll end up 46 and and, and it's all you know, gone. Um, so, you know, you really need to do more. I think you could. And I try to read a person here. Yeah. You can roll and we will go back to you guys, but I will just take a jump to Simon here. Simon, you're going to climb up the mast and I would like you to act under pressure. The pressure here is, of course, the risks you're taking when climbing up the trees. Ouch. Six. You're up in the mast and fixing it. And it seems pretty easy, so you're surprised. It's much easier than you thought to connect the cables and, and uh, repair the damage that have been dealt, probably by the, some falling tree or a storm or something. But when you are going to climb down again, and you can actually see the two women sitting on the end of the trail by the water, talking intimately with each other, you slip with one of your foot and lose your grip of the branch you're holding on. You fall down from the tree and down against the roof of the cottage. And I want you to endure injury, this time with a minus two, two harm. And you can add your fortitude. 11. You land hard on the roof before you fall down at the grass below the cottage. And on the way down, you, you hit your head pretty hard on the tree on the roof. You can feel the world all like spinning around you and uh, how your head is hurting and swelling. You can see blood when it touches your, your forehead and uh, you feel uh, nauseous. At the same time, we go back to the Glade again. Amber, you were just reading Wendy. How did you roll? Listening to her talk about what I need to do and sort of... She seems to have something there. She wants something from me or she cares about me. I don't know. There's something that she cares about. So... I want to know... How could I get her to open up for me. When do you need to give Amber an honest answer? As I'm talking and smiling, I'd say you think it seems quite obvious. Trust me and do as I say. Or rather, in this scenario, take my advice. And if you did that, I might feel more comfortable with you. What is the advice just now? Don't waste your youth and life 
and do nothing with it. So does that mean that if she, if she promised to do that, you would open up? Because it's hard to, for her to prove that she would turn her life around? Yes. Yes. And as you say that, I say... <laughs> wow. It seems like you've been... been doing a lot with your life. I mean, you... You're traveling around now, doing these things, opening up offices and stuff. Sounds like you mean what you say. Maybe I should listen to you. Mm. I smile, clearly, on that. Oh, well, I don't know that much, darling. It's very boring. It's not like it's a fun thing at all. Offices, meetings. You don't want that. You don't want it. I know the magazine will tell you it pays well and you'll have a lovely house and a lovely life. Never need to worry about anything. But it's empty. Amber, it's empty. It's not what you want. I don't think you... No. My my, my two best... I, they... I, 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 you know, I, maybe I spoiled them a little as well. But I tried. I really tried to teach them what I'm trying to teach you. And they just won't listen. <laughs> Bless them. They just won't listen. But you, I think... Yeah, thank you. Yes. I, I think I talk sense, you know. <laughs> sometimes. And maybe at this point, I will casually look behind me and... Maybe notice what has occurred to Simon. And at the same time, I try to lean against your shoulder. So I guess it becomes a bit like... Oh. <laughs> yes. So like... <laughs> uh, uh-oh. Yeah, it's it's this combination of hearing a sudden scream when Simon falls on the roof in combination with another scream coming from behind Amber. Someone is like rushing out from the forest with a wild face and some kind of a club in his hands, swinging at you, Amber. What do you do? I s- give out a scream, and I, I, I grab my machete and I try to uh, strike back, you know, or face him with it. You engage this person in combat, so you can roll for violence. And in violence, I have plus one. You're a well-trained girl. 7, 4, 11, 12. So at the same time, this man swings the club at you. You shop him with the machete. Like hit him with his wrist right under his ribs. You can see how the blade is buried under the man's ribs before the clubs hit you. So you can also roll for indoor injury with two harm I roll 13 14 the hit it takes you out of balance so you fall down on the ground Wendy you can see the man is also falling to the ground he's kind of he's bleeding heavily from the wound in his side and you notice this man, he's, he's look really dirty and he's, he's wearing a pilot uniform, like a blue pilot uniform. And he seems bloody and sh- shaken and he just collapses on the ground, heavily bleeding. Amber, you are fine, just a little bit braced by the club, but... Fuck, you're not one of them. You're not a... Shit, are you from the expedition? He's not conscious anymore. You can also see that he seems to have been shot or something because he have a bullet wound at his right shoulder. What now? Like, bloody? Since before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, like, hole in his uniform. I sort of lean down on him. I sort of get my knife ready. Say no, 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 no! You bastard! You need to tell us things. Uh, what's like? How badly is he bleeding from the machete wound? Really bad, really bad. Amber just shoved it in pretty deep. It's a big, big, like open wound under his ribs. I'm sorry, I didn't mean. I mean, 
He was he was running honey, at me. No, 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 honey, you did well. You did really well. It could have been you, but we need to try and stop this. Do I think it's even possible to get him? Like, I'm like, if is it possible to get this wound binded and get him back? If I were quick. Yeah, if you if you could drag him, or lift him up, and carry him to the cottage, and use the the first aid bag. Yeah, yeah. Then you could probably save him. I know this sounds crazy, but I think we need to save this bastard. He might know something. Help me carry him, would you, dear? Let's get him back. Okay, okay. Oh, so I think... Okay. Simon? Simon? I, I I, sort of looked, but it was so... I almost think I didn't actually notice Simon. Like, like, I'm confused. Like, where's Simon gone? When you two pick up the man and start, like, walking, half-running with him, you can see Simon, like, tumbling out from the side of the cottage. And he has blood all over his face, and he seems kind of dizzy. Simon? Uh, it's alright, I fixed the mask, I think. I just, I just need to lie down for a bit. Oh my god, get up, Simon! Uh, we just got attacked! No, uh, what? No, no, I just, I just, let me... I sort of snort a little in anger. Once again, thinking, Simon, if you just stopped doing stupid things, and I kind of just try and hide it. Simon, just get inside. Okay, darling, we don't want you hurt. We need to get this man. He's in. We need to stop him dying at least five minutes. What, what man? What this is man, that? Simon. What? Focus, uh, focus, darling. I give Amber sort of a look, uh, sort of filled with like, see what I mean. Come on, Simon. Come, come on. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I just need to lie down for a bit, okay? No, come on, get up, be strong. I kind of frown, and I say to Amber, let's just get him in, we can do it, we can do it. Useless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You carried the man into the cottage, and uh, I guess laying down on maybe one of the beds. The first aid bag are, are on the floor where Amber left it yesterday when she, she bandages her, her feet. What are you doing with the man? He's really, really deep wound in his side here. As Simon, does he come in? I'm like, Simon, we need you now. We, you, the, you, the, I don't really, like, I can bad put a bandage on it. I don't think that's going to be very helpful. Okay, no, 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 no. My, my head is spinning. Okay, just, just... Take a pill. I'll be okay. Take a pill. I'll, I'll, I'll just, or something. Yeah, no, 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 no. Just tell me what happened. Okay. I, f- I fell off the roof, um, down the mast. He tried um, to attack us, uh, and Amber defended herself. Unfortunately, that means he's taken a bit of a machete Are wound you okay, to the Amber? Gut. I'm fine. I, I just... You fell on a roof? Well, I... Yeah, no, 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 don't, don't worry about that. Let's, let's see what we can do. P- put him here. Put him on the table. I, I just caught him with a machete. I'm... Couldn't be that bad, could it? She still have the bloody machete in his hand and it's, like, covered in blood. It depends, I guess, on what you hit. But let, let's look at that, okay? Just... Could you, could you get some get me some water? Okay. I go to get a bit of a bottle of water and I kind of look in the med kit as I'm looking at Simon. I mutter to myself, I'm actually trying to look for something like a cold compress or something that maybe can soothe his head a little while he works. There is a scissor in the in the first in the uh, first aid bag that you can use to like cut up the the uniform of the pilot <clears throat> to see the wound clearly. It's a really long and, and vicious wound. Open. You can see it has to be his, his liver or something down there. Simon, if you're going to save this man, you're going to, to, to stitch this wound and stop the bleeding some way. And it will be... If you fail this, this man is going, going to bleed to death. So I need you to act under pressure... The pressure here is that the man dies. Can I help? As in, I'm trying to at least hand things over? You can assist with coolness. Also remember, Simon, you are minus one because of the wound in your head. You are kind of dizzy and you have blood, like, running down in your eyes and, and it's kind of hard to concentrate. Yeah, here goes nothing. Fifteen. Wow. I rolled a nine. Simon, you're working as focused as you can under circumstances to save this man's life. And it takes time. 
the blood everywhere, dripping down the floor, over your hands, over the table. The man is barely breathing when you stitch the wound together. Wendy, the situation, all the blood, all the wounds, everything, it kind of affects you in a way you didn't think it would. When you stumble back from the table with your hands blooded also, and look on Simon working, Amber standing next to him, I don't know, Amber maybe is, Amber is probably keeping it together just now to see if she's, how she's handling this, chopping a man, maybe to death, maybe not killing him, maybe you're crying. Uh, yeah, I try to keep it together and I, I pace back and forth and I uh, I find the photograph with the, the the names and stuff and uh, I look at that like, is it him? Is it him? Is it that guy in the photo? No. Wendy, you're standing there when you suddenly hear someone approaching you. There's a woman in here with you guys. A blonde woman in her thirties with tears running down her face. She's reaching out to you with her hand. Seems that she wants you to take it. I kind of look at my hands with the blood splatter over them. I feel very distant from what Simon's doing. It's almost like I tried to help, but I kind of stopped. As I could hear that. It was before this as well. It was that crying again in the forest. And I look at this woman, I'm confused. The confusion maybe calms me a little for a moment. I take the hand. You have listened to a special episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the adventure The Island of the Dead for Cult Divinity Lost. Cult is published by Helmgast. The music is from the official Cult soundtrack, featuring Atrium Carceri, Meccano Receptor, Mind Divided, Warfield, Howler, Second Escape, Michael Eidhall, Precision Field, Zvaga, Occult Cow Demise, Pandora's Black Book, and Tantric Ape, and is used with permission from Helmgast. Finally, a big thank you to all of our Patreon backers. Creating all this content would not be possible without your generous support on Patreon. You give us so much energy, help us cover our costs, and open up time to record and edit. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. And remember, death is only the beginning.